Joining me now is Edmund Garib. He's a academic and Middle East expert here in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for your time, Edmund. Now, first, Thank you. tell us more about what this vote or you know, lack of decision-making means for the millions of Syrians and refugees that need it. Clearly, uh, people in Syria are facing a very difficult time. There's about 90% uh, of the population are very poor. Uh, actually, about 60% of the, of the people uh, are risking uh, going hungry. And so you have, and uh, Syria is under one of the harshest sanctions regimes imposed uh, any time recently. Uh, the, this is uh, the Caesar Act of the United States, where the United States has Im imposed uh, maximum uh, pressure sanctions on Syria not only punishing uh, the supposedly the Syrian government, the Syrian regime, uh, but in fact it's punishing the Syrian people uh, and uh, punishing anyone who uh, deals with Syria, uh, and except for humanitarian and medical uh, uh, supplies. So the situation is really desperate and it's very, very difficult, and therefore there's a need for uh, aid. There is a need actually to lift this uh, mechanism that allows aid to come through Turkey. Instead, aid should be going also through the Syrian uh, uh, government, through the Syrian capital, Damascus, through Syria's borders. And uh, this way would be a much better way to respect Syria's uh, sovereignty and its territorial integrity. And this is a position uh, not only the Russians, that uh, the Chinese have taken, and many other uh, countries as well, including some Arab countries that have recently uh, like the UAE, which has uh, criticized the Caesar Act. In addition to this uh, uh, issue, there were promises made uh, last year when this was extended. Uh, there was, uh, at that time, uh, President Biden and President Putin spoke, and so they were able to reach a last-minute agreement. Well, now it's very difficult uh, to do with the Ukraine uh, situation. And so there is a need to provide aid, but and there's also a need uh, to uh, realize that this is a temporary mechanism and it's time to end it and bring aid from not only through Turkey but bring it through uh, the Syria's border. You mentioned that uh, one of the options could be to bring humanitarian aid within Syria across conflict lines. You say that that will stay further in line with Syria's territorial integrity, but aid groups say that there is a huge risk of having that aid the siege and not actually getting to the people that need it most, therefore putting control back into the hands of Assad and essentially letting people starve to death. Well, that's, a, that's a good point to, to mention, but at the same time, uh, we are seeing one of the criticisms actually of the aid coming through the Turkish borders uh, is that there are a lot of people who are saying that uh, it's the way it's being distributed is in an unfair uh, manner, that there is a lack of transparency. And so that is a, an issue that has to be dealt with as well. Uh, so basically the problem could be, it's a le legitimate question to raise, it's a legitimate issue. And I think perhaps like this is where the UN uh, can keep an eye on what's going on as uh, they say they are doing the same thing uh, through uh, the Turkish borders. Uh, and ultimately I think the real answer is not to uh, uh, to basically just to continue to provide this aid, but to lift the sanctions, to allow the Syrians to, to rebuild, to reconstruct, to uh, uh, import food. And as we know, mm. sanctions are blunt instruments that do not hurt the regime. Mm. These sanctions have been on for years, and of course the Caesar sanctions made it uh, much okay. more difficult uh, the last uh, year or so. so there's a need to lift these sanctions on the population of Syria. I, I just want to ask about how we got to this point. This is the UN's most powerful body. Russia vetoed this proposal. It did put another uh, proposal in front of the other UN members, stating that they could extend this by six months. Why was that not an option, uh, given that it could at least secure aid for another six months for the Syrian people? Well, basically, this is unfortunately what we're seeing today. And with a lot of events, a lot of issues, they are being politicized. Uh, so there is this tension between the Western countries, primarily the United States and its allies, and the Russia, on the other hand, when it comes to this issue, but also China and as well a number of other uh, countries. Uh, the, the Russians uh, basically said, let's uh, 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 basically go ahead with the six months and then come back to 
uh, the Security Council and vote for six more months, okay. uh, depending on the implementation of the promises that were given. Uh, mm -hmm. The West said, no, this has to be one year. And so there is a, a lot of politicization of this yep. issue. I think that's behind it all. And perhaps the Ukraine conflict has something to do with it too. Really appreciate Absolutely. your time, Edmund. Thank you so much for that. Edmund Charipouris, uh, Middle East expert here in DC.